Hello, I'm back. I'm sure all 18 of my loyal subscribers have been waiting on the edge of their seats for this. Actually not, but whatever. Um, okay, so we're down on the surface of an asteroid. <coughs> this is a 10 kilometer radius asteroid, and I've cut like a cylindrical chunk out of it in the top, in the North Pole actually, of uh, two kilometers radius. So we're right now exactly at the North Pole, um, and we're looking some direction. Um, you'll notice it's in, it's in wireframe still. Um, we've got our colors, which designate um, groups of uh, chunks. It's hard to I'll get I'll get into that later, but it just you can just ignore the colors there for uh, debugging purposes. Um, so, uh, well, we have our ball here, and that is basically a stand-in for a character. We don't have collision turned on yet. Uh, we do have the code, but um, it hasn't been debugged yet. So, right now we're in flight mode. So, this is um, meant to kind of simulate a um, jetpack. When I get a character in there, you'll be able to like fly around. So, you can move. Um, let me see if I can do that here in a second. All right. So we're going to move forward. And you'll notice the LOD is working, like in front of me. And this has a little bit of coasting going on here. Um, I didn't want the uh, jetpack to be like really, like it stops suddenly and starts suddenly, because then it wouldn't really feel like you're flying. So this is. Uh, has kind of a acceleration and deceleration for everything. Also, the camera kind of floats behind you too. There's springs on it, so it makes it a little smoother. So um, anyway, let's uh, start moving. See where we can go. So there goes our LOD. Um, right now, it's at about 3.1 gigabytes memory. Sorry, I'm not being very straight, am I? Here, I'll steer it with the mouse. It's a little more accurate. And um, all the culling is now turned off. That's because I needed to debug some things. So um, when I get the culling turned off, it should be, I'm guessing, like half the size. It depends how close you are to the surface. Because the closer you are to the surface, the more you can cull. But um, the more detailed things are. So typically, you'll get about like half. So it'll be like 1.5 gigabytes. But it doesn't scale. Um, like if you made the planet a lot bigger, it doesn't scale like that because it's the way the LOD works. So it, like uh, my other planet was taking 5 gig completely uncalled and that was like 800, um, what was it, 800, eight, yeah, 800 uh, kilometers diameter. So um, you could do a pretty big planet. You could do probably a full size planet and especially I can do cut down on memory some other ways. So um, I could probably do an Earth sized planet if I wanted to with the with enough memory. Um, so you can see you can see these are voxels. These are our prism voxels again. Uh, and because it's obviously not height map because if you go up the sheer wall here you can see the divisions that it creates. So these are prism voxels. We can do caves if we want to. Right now the function is a height map function and I just cut the cylindrical thing at the top. So let's better start rising up here so we can get over this hill. So it's going to go a little bit higher. So we'll get out of the um, the test zone and get into the hills. So there we are. We're flying over the hills and you can see the LOD is still working. So I'm going to stop here and talk a little bit about the structure. This is va uh, quickly becoming a, a game engine. So the way it works is kind of like um, I, I didn't actually study game engines at all. I just kind of like put it together off the top of my head. So um, everything is like object. Um, the whole world is actually an object. Yeah, I know everybody's screaming. You're using the term object. Everybody uses that, but whatever. So. Um, uh, your, the world is an object, your character is an object, lights are an object, the camera is an object, everything's an object. 
um, now you, it's a hierarchy. So, um, like when you have the sun, you can make the the planet like a kind of like a child of the sun. And there's a reference that goes from the sun to the planet. And there's different kind of references. There's also every objects are connected by it's a tree structure, and they're connected by references. And so, for instance, for the sun to the planet, you would have a, I call it an astral reference where um, the planet will orbit around the sun and it will also, um, you can put mechanics on it so it will also rotate. So, um, the, so as, as we're looking at here, like the, um, the character, the, uh, the controller that I'm using to move this guy around, that's another reference. So it takes input from the keyboard and it does some stuff. And um, the camera is another reference. So it follows, the camera is a special one that it follows another object. You can set it up. So that's how this thing works. So um, also, let's, let me talk about the engine itself a little more. Um, let's see. So it, uh, I've completely rewritten most of the uh, stuff since, well, not the last video, but about the one like over a year ago, I guess it was. So now it uses a different type of heap or all the, um, it, I call it a client proxy heap. So it tries to keep objects together in memory. You have a proxy object and you can lay in a bunch of client objects and those are all grouped together. Um, so the advantage of this is this uses a, uh, a lot of aux trees and actually there's quad trees, there's aux trees, there's all sorts of trees. But usually as I use them, all the children are either there or they're not there. So it's kind of dumb to put them separately because A, you got the cache problems, you know, it has to go different places uh, in memory and, and B, you need like eight pointers. So what I do is for children, I put them all together and I have one pointer from the parent to the eight children for, for an aux tree. And uh, that saves a lot of memory on pointers. Uh, also the heap uses uh, relative addressing. The pointers are special pointers written in uh, their reference counting pointers. And uh, a reference, like a pointer can either go to a client or you can go to the top level proxy, but either way it'll use the reference count of the proxy and that's how I handle all this, this really complex stuff. Now voxels themselves, they're prisms, but they share walls and they share edges with their neighbors. And this way when I create actual uh, uh, meshes, that I don't have to piece them together. I never really go up and down the octree at all. So I just create the, um, the mesh one time and it's already connected um, because it, like it, it'll store, for instance, an edge of the mesh. Um, the, our, my messages have edges, so they have a, um, vertexes, edges, and the, obviously the triangle itself. And so it, it can store the um, edge of the mesh on, on a voxel face, and then it can reference it from both sides. So the mesh, when it gets created, is all, all one piece. And then I can just uh, walk, um, I create normals for the, for the mesh, and then I send it down if anything's changed. Uh, it, it, um, there's a chunking system. Um, you can see it as it you know refines things. Chunks are like prism shaped, and uh, it re-chunks around so as if you zoom way out the chunks will get bigger and bigger and bigger but they roughly contain the same number of uh, voxels because um, the vo there there's less detail in each box so it's a tree and it there's there are basically pointers into the tree w that decide where the chunks are so um, anyway let's see we'll just move around a bit and uh, I still want to create a game out of this, but okay, so if I, let's try to like rise up. I mean, my eventual goal is an MMO. It's kind of a pipe dream though. It's a huge, huge project, but you know, at some point, <laughs> if I do something impressive enough, maybe I can get people to help me. So um, I want to do like a space MMO. I'm kind of an old paper and pencil uh, RPG player. And I want to do something like the old Traveler. I used to really love that game. So, so here's our cutout. You can see as we're getting higher and higher, we're looking at it from an aerial view. So 
we're rising up slowly here. We're looking over the edge and you can pan around. And you can see the LOD is still working. Uh, the LOD, um, there's an object called a God object. And the God object decides how everything gets built. That's why I call it a God object. And it's, it's, an, and it's another object, and all it does is you can attach it to either, say, the camera, or you can attach it to, like, a character. This one's attached to this ball here that you see in front of you. So, you know, er, as it refines everything, it always looks, where, uh, how close am I to the God object? And uh, depending on how close or far it is, from, uh, uh, a chunk is from the God object, it will refine it. Um, so this uses, uh, I think, like in my first video, I talked about uh, marching prisms, which is really the same thing as, as marching cubes, but I'm using prisms because prisms, like what it does is it takes a um, icosahedron and it kind of extrudes it outwards. So you start it with like 20 prisms. And that's the top level. And then you can uh, subdivide, like a prism is kind of cool because you can subdivide it into eight parts like a cube. I mean, you have to do it um, kind of an odd way, but it, uh, but you can still do it. You can create an octree out of it. Um, but you have the same problem when you're going transitioning. So it has a special uh, algorithm that goes, that transitions from uh, one level of resolution to another, and you can see it like in the distance here. And it basically, um, God, it's, just, it's such an odd algorithm, I can't really explain it, but, um, but it has something called saturation values, it checks and it has to deal with like corners of where you can have up to like 12 chunks actually meet. So um, it kind of communicates through the vertexes that are shared by the, uh, by the uh, voxels and it, it tries and it, it actually works pretty well. It's, it, it, it took me a long time to figure out how to do this a really good way, but uh, it's not so complex once I, once I had it, got it working. So, um, Anyway, and then it, it, from that, it, it kind of does a tessellation, which is not optimal right now. I, I figured out a better way to tessellate it, but I will fix that at some point. But right now it's working. So um, it does a tessellation of just border voxels, and from then it, it uh, can just create geometry that flows from one um, chunk to the next, as it's doing now. So anyway, you can see, obviously, I'm on a spherical world with all sorts of mountain ranges and stuff on it so this is um this is a different algorithm than i used in my last one i s i don't know i got it off i forget the website but i got it off some website i just copied it and played with it and so it's uh it's another fractal algorithm again there's no data on disk this is all just generated as you as you go along so um it's basically zero zero data. At some point, if you want to modify your voxels, like you see in a lot of voxel games, um, I'll let you do that. Um, but what I will do is try, I'll have a system where I just store the actual changes. So it'll basically, it'll basically store changes over a, um, uh, from, uh, from the fractal functions that I use. Um, another feature that I added is, um, <coughs> Well, I added a lot of stuff that I'm actually not using yet, but uh, like a lot of times the fractal functions, you don't want to have the detailed functions uh, view from a distance. So, um, so you want to introduce uh, detail as you get closer. So the problem with that is the uh, the value of a of a voxel vertex can then change as you get closer, um, which is okay, except for the fact on a boundary. Of, of two chunks of two different levels. In one case, it can kind of have one value. In one case, it can be uh, it can be have another value, and so you have to have a system to reconcile that. So it it basically chooses the um, lower resolution value for that, and then it has to do some uh, special things to uh, make the mesh change. Like on one side, there'll be an extra function and the other side won't have it. So um, it uh, has a system of doing that, which I will turn on later. But uh, right now I'm, I'm going to get the physics working, hopefully in the next, I don't know, a few weeks, I hope. I, I actually took the code from an old program I wrote like 10 years ago, so I know it works. It's going to use, for now it's just going to have sweep sphere. 
So which is your basic thing that you need for, um, uh, you know, that you use for a character, like the character pill that you see walking around. It's actually sweet pill, but um, it's this almost the same algorithm, except you modified a bit. So um, I should get that in, and then you'll actually be able to run over the surface. Now for the physics, I'm not going to use the, I don't use these visual, uh, this visual mesh at all. The reason for that is um, if there's a delay in the update of the, the visuals, then you'll fall through the geometry. So what I did in my old non-voxel program is I have like a duplicate um, copy of the world. And all it does is it generates geometry just like right around the player. And it's really fast. And it actually throws it away. So it, it doesn't even take that much space. So it generates the geometry as you walk. I call it just-in-time uh just in time collision. So um, that actually works pretty well. And it's actually act easier with voxels because you don't have a lot of stretched polygons. So it's easier to find the um, things you need to collide with. So that's what I'll be using for the collision. And eventually I'll be using something similar for the pathing because the pathing is going to be another issue with that. But I, can, I think I can do just in time pathing too um, because um, the voxels have adjacency information so I can just walk from one to the next and so forth so I could even do like aerial pathing for instance pathing in the air because it um, keeps track of not just um, the terrain but also the space is just subdivided into voxels and stuff so anyway so anyway that's about it for now um, I hope you enjoyed this video Sorry if I'm really boring. I, I'm, I'm never going to make it as a YouTuber, but um, whatever. Uh, I won't quit my day job. All right. So thanks for watching. Bye.